Yeah, Ken, I, you know, I, I love the intensity that we had to, to build that lead. I think we went a 14 to 2 run to, uh, to get it. We had active hands. We were getting out with pace. I thought uh, we made simple plays. We had good movement. And then Trey picked up his fourth, unfortunately, and, and that's when they got uh, back in the game. Uh, I thought Trey was terrific defensively. You know, he had a tough assignment, but that stretch where we took the lead, uh, got, it, got it up to double figures, uh, Trey was key in that. So that hurt us when, when he went out with that fourth foul. Uh, and then they made the plays. You got to give them credit for making plays down the stretch. Uh, I didn't think we had the same level of trust with each other as we did the other night, obviously, in that first game. I thought we were moving it, the swagger we had, uh, you know, getting up and down, playing with great pace. Tonight, you know, we just, uh, I thought, early let our shot, lack of shot making uh, ultimately started to affect us. We didn't have as much movement. Uh, that's who we are. We're a movement team, and we just did not do that well enough uh, tonight to win this game. Uh, half their points, I think over half their points were from the free throw line. We put them in the bonus too quickly uh, early in the second half, and then obviously that cost us. Uh, they're late in the game putting them on the line uh, too many times. But, you know, like I told the guys, this is a process. We're going to have a lot of opportunities to learn uh, things early in the season and correct and hopefully get playing our best basketball at the right time. I don't know if this is the right terminology, but their their pack line kind of man defense. Uh, to what degree did that uh, contribute to the necessity of shooting perimeter shots like you did? Yeah, they did. They they did. They, their game plan was to pack it in and, and force us to shoot shots. Um, you know, the, I look back on those four layups and dunks we missed early in the game. You know, those come back to haunt you when you can't convert and you can't finish. Uh, that could have pushed that thing up to double figures early, and it could have been a completely different outcome. Um, but you know, then it, it started. It really got to a half-court game. I talked about it last night after the game uh, against McNeese that we were going to have to execute uh, if we wanted a chance to win this one, and certainly uh, we'll have to do the same thing on Saturday if we want to have a chance to win that one. And we didn't do a good enough job with that. When we did have movement, uh, good things happened. Uh, but you know, uh, some of those shots that we missed, I thought we had some wide-open ones. Obviously, the free throws, uh, guys that normally knock them down. Uh, we missed too many of those, missed nine free throws. Uh, so, yeah, there, there was things that we can do to build on, but certainly a lot of teaching moments that we need to get better at. Yeah, Coach, you referenced uh, the, the run you made there in the second half, uh, the first ten minutes. Anything you, you told your team at halftime to, to get them to, to really play, I thought, the best basketball of the game those first ten minutes of the second half? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Jake. I, the, the biggest thing for us is was coming out with the energy and intensity to get the game turned around, and we did that. You know, we came out even though we missed some good shots early. I thought in the second half, uh, you know, still at the first media, we were plus three, and then went on that nice run, fourteen to two run, uh, to get a double digit lead. And then that's when you got to step on them. That's when you got to get that killer mentality. Uh, we allowed them to get back in the game uh, again, free throw line, which forced us to get into half court, and we just didn't execute well enough. Huskers drop this one 69 to 66. We'll take a break and uh, talk uh, another segment with Coach Hoiberg. At, at Is this, is this on, Seamus TV? Is this on TV? Uh, you know, the big wins to put those behind you, the emotional ones, and then these tough, devastating losses. You've got to find a way to put that behind you. You can't hang on to it and let it affect the next one. We'll get together tomorrow. We'll have a short, light uh, workout, prepare, put a game plan in, and, uh, and, and try to come out and do better on, uh, on Saturday. But like I said, there's a lot of things that uh, we'll have early in the season that we can learn from, and, and I'm confident in this group. I love this group. Uh, they're going to bounce back and, and be in the gym eager to get better tomorrow, and, uh, and hopefully we'll take a step in the right direction. 
maybe goes back to what you were talking about of not in terms of not having a chance to play a preseason game or an exhibition or, or a, you know, preseason scrimmage in that as even though these guys have had experience, they've never done this against somebody else together, right? You know, still a lot, a lot of new faces that, that haven't played together against other opponents to this point. So like, like I told them, whether we win or lose, we're going to find a way to learn, uh, to learn from the outcome and, and get better uh, from it. And I am confident. I'm, I'm very confident in this group. I, and like I, I've talked about this all along, going all the way back to these early practices, I love their competitive spirit. And I know this hurt. It, it hurt them. It was a very dejected locker room in there. And we're going to bounce back and get better. And uh, like I said, hopefully play our best basketball uh, when it matters most. Okay, Coach, thanks much. We'll let you go. 69 to 66, the Huskers lose the. So we're Robin Washit. Hey, Fred, like you mentioned, this was kind of the first chance your team got to have, uh, you know, real adversity in a game together as a team. Obviously, the, the ending wasn't what you wanted, but the way that they responded coming out in halftime, uh, what did you learn about these guys just with the way that they, you know, body language handled themselves coming out of the break and um, how they finished that game as, after how it started? I, I didn't love our body language at the end of that first half. You know, Kobe hit the big one to cut it to, to a two-possession game, and that's that was the first thing that I got on him about at halftime was the body language. There was a free throw situation. All five were off on their own, uh, and they bought into it. They came out, and we did play our best stretch uh, those first 10 minutes of the second half. Unfortunately, you know, we dug ourselves that hole and, and just couldn't get out of it. Uh, we missed good looks. We missed shots that we're going to make. We missed free throws that we're going to make. Uh, we missed layups and dunks that we're going to make. Um, but that can't affect the other end. I thought, again, we just we were too handsy. We put our hands on them and put them on the free throw line way too much. And a, a big part of that was early when we uh, uh, got ourselves in foul trouble and put them in the bonus very quickly into the second half. OK, Jacob Padilla. Hey, Coach. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, cool. Um, what were you hoping to get 6.8 or 7.1 seconds left there? It was just kind of the dribble at three, what you're hoping for? Are you trying to run something there? What were you hoping yeah, to get? We, at we, had a, we had a, a flare going on the, on the back side, a hammer screen. Uh, I'll have to go back and look at it to see if, uh, uh, see if he was open. Okay, we'll go to Connor Hepper. Hey, Coach. Uh, you mentioned you played pretty well. Uh, energy was good out of the gate and good out of the second half as well. Um, how do you keep that energy when shots aren't falling? Um, and, and is that just an early season thing? Is that a, a new team thing? I guess, how do you kind of look at that? Well, that's a huge part of it. You, you, you have to find a way to win ugly games. You have to find a way to win the grind out ones like tonight was. And, you know, had we pulled this one off, it would have been huge. The fact that we shot 29%, we're still right there and in it. But I agree with you. Our energy at the beginning of the game defensively was absolutely off the charts, getting deflections, getting run outs. We just didn't convert. And again, that, that, that cost us. We could have very easily, instead of been up 10, been up 16 or 20, had we made those early layups and free throws. So, uh, but the, yeah, the energy was there. It, it had nothing to do with us coming out lackadaisical. I thought we came out with incredible intensity, especially defensively. Unfortunately, we just couldn't make a shot. Chris Bastet. Hey, Fred, are you happy with 41? Three-point attempts, is, is that something that, that you're okay with this team doing? This if they're good year? ones, if they're good ones, Chris. I, you know, we, we took a lot of force just, you know, kind of jab, jab without movement. When we move, we, we get shots. You know, that's, that's been evident all through uh, our preseason and in practices and in the last game. We had great looks. Uh, I thought we had some really good ones, but, you know, unfortunately those didn't go in, and then I thought we forced them. I thought we had too many forced uh, shots where we didn't trust, continue to trust the offense. Go challenge. Fred, to piggyback on the three-point shooting, um, when, when you miss, you know, 10 or 11 in a row in the first half and then go through another uh, funk in the second half, what do you tell guys? Do you tell them to keep, keep looking for good ones or do you tell them to, to get the ball inside? Well, we look for good ones. That, again, their game plan was to completely shut down the paint. They did a great job with that and, and forced us uh, to out of it. We don't have a big post presence. We just don't have that right now. Uh, you know, especially with Derek uh, not in the game. He's, he's our best post-up guy on the inside. So, you know, give Nevada credit. Their game plan was to keep us out of the paint. They did that uh, and forced us to take some. But our movement creates and generates good looks, and our movement did not create those looks tonight. It was too much uh, playing stagnant. Um, 
and uh, in, in, in shooting without the movement that we generally have. Uh, you know, when we got that lead and had that 14 to two run, it was all about pace. I mean, we had great pace, we had great movement, and that uh, ended up with a great possession. When we don't have that, when we're stagnant, it generally ends up in a four shot. And again, that's something we'll, we will learn from and, uh, and be better at, because we're gonna have the exact same thing happen to us uh, here in two days. Nicole Weaving. Coach, you gave up 30 points inside the paint tonight um, against Nevada. What would you? What can you do defensively to improve on that going forward? Well, uh, yeah, and a lot of that was uh, was just letting them go by it. We got to guard the dribble better. We have, to, we have to be much better in that area. We can't foul them. We can't put them on the free throw line. Uh, obviously, they had a huge size advantage on us, and uh, we just we we need to. It, that's where it starts. It starts with guarding the bounce. You know, early we were fronting. We had great activity. We had good uh, backside help. And that was resulting in turnover. We turned them over 21 times. Uh, but we can't gamble. We can't stab and, and, and allow them to get into the paint like, like they did tonight. And a follow-up question for Coach from Jason. Uh, can you hear me, Coach? I can. Um, your free throw rate has improved considerably from last year, from like 29% to about 45% through two games. What do you uh, attribute to this? Well, I, I think a lot of it just has to do with all across the board. I think we have more attack guys. We, we have guys that can get in there, uh, draw contact. Teddy, you know, has a, a very high free throw rate. Delano uh, did a good job getting himself uh, to the line in the first couple games. Um, you know, Teddy, that's that's what he does. He does such a good job of, of absorbing contact and be, being able to play through it. Uh, you know, would like to see us obviously convert uh, better, 70%. You know, we should be better than that. Uh, but yeah, that, that's an emphasis when, when you drive the ball, especially when shots aren't falling, you have to drive and try to generate points. Uh, and I thought our guys did a solid job of that. But again, we just settled uh, for too many uh, forced ones and contested ones. Uh, and again, we'll grow, we'll get better. Okay, that will end Coach Hoiberg's thing. We'll put a break and we'll come back for players. Mike's live. We're back with the, we're back with Delano Ben. I'll go with Robin Washett first. Hey Delano, coach was saying that offensively there were too many times when things just kind of got stagnant out there and got, the movement wasn't where it needed to be and guys were settling for some bad shots. You know, as you're kind of running the offense out there, what did you see that kind of led to that where where the offense was kind of out of sync all night? Um, you know, we definitely noticed being on the floor out there, like throughout, even when we got into the timeouts, that the ball is not moving as much as it should, you know. And every time we went into the timeout coming out, we tried to correct it. And we had spurts where we would get the movement back at where we wanted to be, where we seen where we were going on like a little 10 point run or something. But man, um, you know, with this team, if we just keep moving the ball, playing for each other, we know we're going to be great. So we just got to go back and, you know, go back into practice and figure out what we got to do to maintain that throughout 40 minutes a game, throughout the adversity, the fire, the heat of the next team, and being able to take a punch and just punch back and be able to grind it out for 40 minutes. And once we figure out how to do that, you know, we'll be good. Still early in the season and not to hang our heads off this one, you know. Chris Pastat. Two games in 24 hours. I mean, was there a fatigue factor at all there with you guys? Um, no, 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 not to say that, you know, we prepared for this, you know, our coach, we've been preparing for this since June or since whenever we knew we we're going to have two games back to back. So, you know, we don't want to use that as our excuse as fatigue or nothing like that. You know, it's a mental game as well as a physical. So our mental, our mental conditioning got to be there just like our physical, physical conditioning. So, you know, we got to be able to fight through it and be able be able to use our minds over our bodies at times when we need it most. So going in a back to back game at the end of the game, we got to be able to fight it out and just, you know, leave it all on the floor. Chris Hey, Delano, obviously you want to win the game, but are there some things you can take out of this as, as kind of, you know, teaching moments or, or learning moments going forward? 
Um, you know, we never just look at a loss as a loss. Every loss is a learning experience. You know, we're going to go back and we're going to watch film and we're going to figure out the things that we did good and the things that we did bad. And we're going to go back tomorrow and try and piece it all together and get ready for our game on Saturday. So, yeah, we're definitely going to take a lot of things from it. And I think we shot like nine for 41 from the field or from the three-point line or something like that. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that we have guys capable of making shots. You know, we had a lot of guys today that weren't knocking down shots and everyone really, but, you know, when, when we make shots and if we hit three or four of those, you know, not to say we win the game, but it's a different game. The game's going to go a lot of different ways. So, you know, we just got to just do what we know what to do, man. And that's just move the ball, play, play for each other, play together, and we'll live with the outcome if we leave it all on the floor. Jacob Padilla. Hey, Delano. What did you think about the, the minutes off the bench from Shamil and Kobe there, and the, the burst that those guys gave you? Um, you know, Shamil, Shamil and Kobe, they're, they're, they're guys that come off the bench that are, that are starter guys, that are starter guys. You know, with our team, we have a lot of depth. And, you know, them coming off the bench, bringing that fire and bringing that energy, some instant offense. You see Shamil working the room, getting some easy buckets for us. So we had nothing going there. Kobe coming in and making a floater, making a three when we don't have nothing at the end of the half. When we need a little bit of juice going in, you know, Kobe hit that three. And, you know, we could count on guys to bring offensive plays and bring that energy coming off the bench, man. We love it. We love it. And, it's a great addition to this team, and we need them on this team to be successful. So every piece of this team counts the most, man, and we're going to need everyone to be able to be successful. Uh, Connor Hepper. Hey, Delano. Uh, you took 11 threes today. Lat wasn't quite going as he was yesterday from three. Is, is that something that you feel the responsibility to do, you know, shoot more three-pointers when other guys aren't hitting them? No, no. That's definitely not a responsibility that I feel. I feel like, you know, with our guys – we're a very unselfish team, so if it's me that shoots however amount of three-pointers I shot today, then that's that. If it's lat shooting, you know, we have confidence in whoever's shooting the ball. And that's the, that's the thing about this team, man. We're 100% we're invested in each other, and we, 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 we're rooting for each other. If you put up a shot, we're not going to – we're going to stand up and say it's going in. You know, we're, we're a different type of team, and we just – whoever it is shooting, you know, we hope it goes in. We cheer for them when they shoot it, and if they miss it, it's get back on defense. You're good. Shoot the next one. So, you know, it could be anyone shooting shots. You know, we don't, we don't ever hang our heads on who shot threes or who does what. You know, we just try and go out there and leave it all on the floor. Okay, Doug, not seeing any of us. That will end our press conference with Delano, and thank you, guys. Thank you.